JD from Flux Focus back again with the Altera Cyclone 2 FPGA Starter Development Board and we're doing the first example out of the uh, Starter Development Kit User Guide and uh, the first thing that you're going to want to do is open up the Quartus 2 Programmer and just check your hardware setup and make sure that USB Blaster is, uh, is in the drop down list and that you've selected it and that'll be there if you've installed the driver correctly and the first one, the first example that we want to load up, you'll find under the kits, Cyclone 2 starter kit, examples, starter demonstrations, C2 starter USB API, under the hardware, the SOF file is the one that we're looking for. And if we start that, you'll see on the FPGA it's now stopped the demo and it's now running this uh, this demonstration that we've loaded into it. Okay now that that's happened you'll want to open up the uh, starter kit control panel and if you open using the USB port 0 it's the same port that the Quartus 2 programmer uses, so if you go back to the Quartus 2, uh, you may have to make sure that uh, this uh, window, the uh, the control panel program, is uh, not using that port anymore. Okay, so now that we're in here, we'll uh, do a couple of things. Uh, for instance, um, the seven segment displays. Let's bring up one, two, three, four and we'll set that and you can see that that's come up on the seven segment displays uh, let's turn green LED 0 and 1 on and you can see that's come on down there and uh, let's turn uh, 7 and 8 of red on and you can see that they've come on let's turn all them off uh, I've got a uh, a keyboard here plugged into the PS2 port on the side of the FPGA uh, so if I do a bit of uh, the quick and there's something wrong either with my keyboard or the PS2 input C and K don't like to be together or something uh, I suspect it's probably the keyboard The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog, and that's not perfect, but you can see that there's uh, input coming in from the keyboard. I'll clear Go that. And check tools, and make sure that the multiplexer is on USB host port to begin with, uh, because we're about to load some music into Flash, and the FPGA routes uh, signals from certain places to other places and uh, for you to load a file from your computer through the USB into Flash um, that multiplexer needs to be on the USB uh, so the first thing I'll do is just to make sure we'll do chip erase and this might take a little bit okay now that we've done that we'll go into sequential write and just click on file length and write a file to Flash and under starter demonstrations you'll find a music folder and if you go into that uh, if you click on music.wave this is a very short uh, audio sample uh, but it means that it won't take too long to load into the flash okay now that that's loaded you'll see that the uh, edit box for length has been filled in uh, because we've ticked on the file length uh, now, if you go into Tools and change the Flash Multiplexer from uh, Host USB port to Asynchronous 1 and uh, it'll use that to route the audio through to uh, the line out from the Flash. So if I click on that and then click Configure. Okay, so for the audio to come out we need to switch switch 1 to off and have switch 0 up and I can hear that coming through the earphones uh, it's a very short sample and uh, there's a bit of um, uh, 
a bit of uh, dead air at the uh, either at the uh, front of the file or the back of the file. Uh, but when it comes round again, I'll uh, play it into the microphone. And uh, hopefully you can hear it there on the camera as well. Okay, so uh, I'll just put the flash mul multiplexer back to uh, host USB for the moment. VGA. If I just keep that on uh, default image for the moment and switch over the monitor, <coughs> that's the uh, the default image. Uh, click on cursor enable and uh, using the using the scr uh, horizontal and vertical scroll bars uh, that's supposed to put a, a cursor on the screen and you can see there's a big crosshair there so in the folder for this project you'll find um, a another folder SW standing for software and you'll find a program called uh, I think it's called IMG Conv so image converter and the the example here for changing the logo for uh, VGA to make it simple uh, they're asking you to uh, take your 640 by 480 bitmap in grayscale and it doesn't have to be in grayscale but it helps if you're starting grayscale and if you open that up and in this window here it may not show it uh, completely uh, but then if you save raw data it'll process your image and uh, then you can close that uh, program and when you go to SRAM to write a file to SRAM in the directory where you've uh, saved your bitmap uh, it will have created a few .dat files and the grey dot dat file is the one that you're after so click on that and open and that will load your image into SRAM for displaying on VGA you can go to uh, tools again and uh, same thing again the SRAM multiplexer if we change uh, that uh, routing with asynchronous one and configure that uh, and just make sure in VGA that uh, your default image uh, has been unticked and you can see that that image is now displaying on the monitor. Okay, well that's uh, about it really for this demo. Uh, the only other thing you can do there is uh, do a board test and you can uh, click all those and you can see the LEDs will do a bit of a chase LED test OK and the seven segments go through a cycle, seven segment test OK. I assume it's doing a read write test on itself. SD RAM test passed, SRAM test failed, and that's only because we've um, uh, still, I think we've still got the SRAM uh, multiplexed uh, to asynchronous one. We'll do that test again in just a second but uh, now it's doing the flash test. Flash test passed and I'm not sure what the LCD test is uh, but apparently uh, the LCD test is okay. Just to prove that the SRAM is actually working okay I'll put uh, the host USB port uh, multiplexer back for SRAM and we'll do the board test, untick everything else and we'll just do the board test on SRAM and SRAM test pass so that was uh, it's just that the test is done through the USB port and I'm pretty sure that that's it for that first demonstration you, you can uh, go into SD RAM and write some stuff into um, into SD RAM and uh, load it back out into into a file but uh, it uh, doesn't really do much else. Thanks for watching. The next demonstration for this board uh, is a music based one so that should be interesting uh, so keep an eye out for that one. Cheers!